Another day, another podcast. Hello, YouTube. Putting in the real hard work of your of the podcast that is weekly that we didn't do last week. Yes, yeah. we're here for you 24, 24 7. 24 hours a year, seven months a year. <laughs> 25 8. 25 8? Yeah. yeah. 25 minutes and 8 seconds at minimum. At, at, <laughs> well, at, at, at maximum, more like. Okay, so here's what here's what we were talking about, um, uh, Grayson, before you got here, which was Tyler was talking about forging his parents' signature for something. And I think he was joking, but I actually did this. I did it. I was not joking. Oh, nice. Well, you can tell your <laughs> yeah, story. Yeah, I did it too. I mean, I, haven't we all? You go for Yeah, you go. You, Probably. You go first. So we, um, it was in fifth grade. If you didn't do an assignment, you got something called a pink slip. And uh, basically it meant you had to like do your assignment after school in like this, like it, it, it was in the library actually. Um, so, or the uh, elementary school library. So I would get those uh, fairly often. I was such a terrible student for so many years. It's pretty wow. funny that I went into education, but um, I would, I would uh, forge my mom's signature. Cause I thought, I kind of, I think I could have done my dad's signature better, but I thought that the teacher wouldn't believe it because he never signed anything. I learned a long time ago that I can't ever tell my dad when anything ever happens because he would, he just had a volcanic temper at times. So I was like, okay, well, I'll just never <laughs> tell you anything then. So I got, I mean, I was okay at doing her signature, at least fifth grade me thought so. But I think the problem is, like, when you're faking a signature, the lines don't look smooth. Because, like, I was, I was trying to do it slowly so it looked right. Yeah. But you can't draw smooth lines that way. So I remember um, I went to parent-teacher conferences with my mom. And I was like, I wasn't really expecting anything. And then my teacher pulled all the, out all these pink slips. And she was like, Mary, are these your signatures? And she said, no. And I just, like... I unironically did that. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> you got caught, man. Yeah, I hated my fifth grade teacher. She was not nice. And not just for that reason. She hit me with a ruler once for no reason. Or a yardstick. What? Yeah, yeah. that happened to me too. Oh, Getting a yardstick? Yeah. Damn, she had some distance on you. Yeah. She, she was hitting you with ranged attack. She had a long sword. <laughs> yeah, basically. Uh, <laughs> Peterson, where you messed up was that basically once you've established, like you get maybe your parents to do one or two, but don't get your parents in the habit of expecting to sign your stuff. Like maybe I could do this because, you know, single parent household and my mom worked, but she was a busy lady. I basically just forged every signature for everything that was needed. So therefore it was constant. It was always consistent. And as long as my grades didn't slip, then she was none the wiser. And my parent, my, my teacher just said, Oh, it's always consistent. Cause it was always me. <laughs> I, I don't know. I never, uh, I never got caught doing any of that. My, I used to have like a reading log thing. Because they wanted us to go home and read for like 30 minutes. We'd have to write the title of the book. We'd have to write how long we were reading it for. And then our parents were supposed to sign it. Dang. And yeah, it got to a point where um, I would just like scribble in there. And they just accepted it. They didn't really care. But then um, my parents started seeing that I was doing that. And they were like, are you forging our signature? And I was like, no. I, I never really thought twice about it i just kind of wrote in there whatever um but eventually they just started signing them for me and i didn't have to read anything they 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 were enabling me being a dumb kid and uh look at me now now i argue with flat earthers because that's the only thing that i can do good yeah you're a dumb adult well yeah do well it's okay I, yeah at least i'm not a flat earther it could always be worse yeah it could that's be a lot cool. better but it could also be worse you know, I'm curious, like, out of all the flat earthers, which one do you think got the best grades in school growing up? Because most of them, I assume, got F's and D's. I mean, they're not paying attention, right? But who got who was like the straight A student that somehow became a flat earther? Was was there any of them? Hands down, Ron. And it's because <laughs> he told me, and I believe him 100%. I believe 
Ron, I don't know if you've ever met him, but he's on TikTok. But he uh, he said that he got his IQ tested when he was in fifth grade, and he got a score or got a score of 176. So I believe him. I'm just taking his word for it, and he's always giving me the challenge. He said, well, let's go on a vacation to Fiji. Let's go to Fiji. We'll get an IQ test, and, and whoever has the higher IQ, the other one has to pay. I think wait, he, wait, wait. I think he took it to th- international waters for an IQ test. <laughs> I think he took the test three times and and assumes that the the combined score is your IQ. He <laughs> yeah. thinks of it like that. He thinks of it like making money, you know. Well, they yeah. did say they probably told him he was an anomaly, and I'm guessing that it was because he was the first person to ever score a point one seven two. Point he didn't even get a, he didn't he didn't even get a full he didn't get one full IQ point not even one at all <laughs> the first the first person to eat his IQ test yeah, well you know yeah. he did say that he's on a special diet and doing like electroshock therapy of some sort to try to make himself bulletproof yeah. and this is an actual uh-huh. thing that he said yeah he's trying to make himself bulletproof he's yet to test it and I am eagerly awaiting results. I hope that he doesn't, but if he does fucking something stupid, you'll hear from me first. Ron Cor goes deep. Electroshock therapy? That's what, he, that's what he claims. I'm assuming he does the same thing David Weiss does, where he puts, like, the bird cage on his head, hooks it up to a Van de Graaff generator. I don't even know if you've seen that, but that I also happened. That. Yeah, well... David Weiss said he's charging his life force energy and it didn't elaborate on what that meant. And he said, yeah, man, it's super cool. You know, like Bruce Lee used to do stuff like this. I can assure you that Bruce Lee did not put a birdcage on his head. Probably not. Also, so what if he did? Like, just because Bruce Lee put a birdcage on his head and tried to electrocute himself doesn't mean that's a good idea. Well, plus, didn't Bruce Lee (laughs) die like a beta? Very young, yeah. Like, yeah. like 36 or something? I mean, if, he, if he was so smart, why is he dead? Mm, touche. Yeah, yeah, that's, you know, me personally, that's why I chose to be built different. You know, that's a choice, okay? Yeah. And I wake up every morning and I choose to be different. I used to tell I'm my built st- that way. I used to tell stuff like that to my student or say stuff like that to my students. They'd be like, I'm sick. And I'd, I'd just tell them to knock it off. I'm like, it doesn't work that way. I was like, being sick is a choice, Okay. So grow I up. love uh, I love when like flat earthers like will reject ninety nine percent of science, but then like latch on to like very specific scientists. So like for some reason they're all about Tesla, and they're all about like Van de Graaff. Like they like Van de Graaff generators. Like Witsit uses Van de Graaff generators. David Weiss, and it was so funny to me because Van de Graaff's grandson is like on YouTube and has done a debate with Witsit and Witsit didn't know that he was Van de Graaff's grandson. And like, literally he starts bringing up how a Van de Graaff generator can be used to like prove that gravity isn't real and it's all electricity. And then the guy was like, that was literally my grandfather that invented that. I have a PhD in physics. Like you can see it on his name, his name on his PhD says Van de Graaff. And he's just like, and like he just schooled with it all about how stupid he was being about this. Like literally, he's like, I am like uniquely positioned to debunk the bullshit that you just spewed. It was glorious. That's fine. I didn't know that. That's funny. I try not I, to watch this. Definitely got to send that cool. link. Yeah. Yeah, if you can find that, you got to send it. I will watch that. That sounds good. Yeah, uh, it watching it make a fool was, of himself uh, is good. Yeah, it, it was a while ago, but like, yeah, the guy, uh, he's Tapioca Weasel on uh, YouTube, but he's Van de Graaff's grandson, and he has, uh, he's an actual <laughs> real physicist. I mean, it's it's, cl- it's great. What what a name. Wow. Yeah, Tapioca Weasel. <laughs> that, sound, that sounds like a Kahoot randomized generated thing. Oh, that's a, that's a question for you, Peterson. Uh, so I'm assuming that you did the cahoots when you were in class and stuff. I do not let did, them pick their names. No, you don't. I was no. gonna say, did have you ever, and did you quickly realize why that's a mistake, or did you just know it would what be a mistake cahoots? from the start? I, I it's had... like a, an online quiz thing. You can set up okay. a quiz, and then you put it on like the projector in front of everybody, and they oh, just okay. select the options on their phone. Gotcha. You yeah. simply would not believe how bad high schoolers are. 
you, you I used to be one of them. Before, you wouldn't so believe I think it. I would. Yeah, but you weren't. I I promise you weren't the most misbehaved kid in your class, in your school or whatever. You probably weren't. And, you know, I I get at least a couple of them every single year. And they th their friends are in that classroom, too. And they don't get you just I mean, the stuff that you hear every single day in classrooms and like the jokes they tell and stuff. And like, for the most part, you can tell they're not being serious, but it's like, man, the idea that you would say that, I mean, like, it's just, ugh, ugh. It's I mean, bad. I know exactly what you're talking about. I, I feel like a lot of people that were high school guys at one point can, can probably relate. I don't know. Like the, the stuff I joked about with my friends in high school, man. <laughs> I, I actually was playing the new Call of Duty the other day with some of my old buddies from high school that I hadn't talked to in a while, and uh, they were just over in the, you know, Uncommon Ground, the other server, and that has, you know, pretty strict rules. I mean, it's relaxed, but, you know, strict enough to where it's, like, they need to watch what they're saying, and I forgot that they don't have any filter so they just start saying the most obscene, vile things that I've heard in a long time. And my brain has really been, like, <laughs> I guess for lack of better terms, like, TikTok brain rotted. <laughs> I would say so, a, good, a good term might be smoothed out. Smoothed yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. That, that's probably a good way to put it. But, like, I don't know. In everyday life, I say things like P3DO and stuff like that. Like, I catch myself doing stupid stuff like that or saying unalived. And, I don't know, just hearing them not have any filter, and it, it was a lot worse than that. I won't go into detail. But uh, yeah. <laughs> hearing, them just, hearing them just dropping words that I haven't heard since high school, I was, uh, I was a little taken aback. <laughs> yeah, that's what people are like. I, I get that with my friends every now and then. I like, because I, it's, it's been kind of rough the last couple months. We don't, we don't game much together, but I've always been like, why don't I just stream while I'm gaming? Cause like, we're really funny. But then like once in a blue moon, I'm like, yeah, this is why I don't do it. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I, I purposely, I, I don't let TikTok censor me or anything, or I don't let myself censor myself because of like TikTok or whatever. I just, when people are like, no, you have to say unalive. I'm like, no, actually, you don't. I'm going to say every word in the book and I, I don't care. There are plenty of words that I don't want to say that I'm not going to say, but yeah. Um, but where I do get that is like, I get teacher brain kind of sometimes. So, like, <clears throat> it's not so much anymore, but when I lived in South Dakota, the high school was across the street from a college, and I went over to that college for lunch almost every single day because they had pretty good food, and it was pretty cheap. But, like, there's there's college students there, right? So I would be, like, eating lunch, or, like, I would walk by, and I see somebody wearing a hat, and I'd be like, take your... Oh, wait, no, no, this is, I don't work here. <laughs> and they're in college. <laughs> I'd be like, take your hat off. Or, like, I'd hear them swear, and I'd be like... And then I'd and then I'd catch myself being like, yeah, they're not they're not high schoolers. Are you not allowed to wear a hat <laughs> in school? No. No. Why? Um, well <laughs> I, uh, dress code stuff with teachers. Okay. Like I get I, I've heard people I saw this TikTok live stream once. I tried to join it just to tell them how fucking stupid they were, but it was like, I don't know, some girl and the 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 heading above her said abolish dress codes and i was ju i was gonna go up there and be like okay so are you okay with people going to school naked no a, nobody's gonna do that okay are you okay with somebody taking a string of yarn and tying it around their waist because they're technically wearing clothes no it's just like okay so whatever your dress code rule would be, because you would obviously have one, would be completely arbitrary. Now, you think the dress codes we have are unfair because it's sexist, because girls get dress coded more than guys or whatever, and why can't we have hats? Blah, 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 blah. My idea about this has been, like, typically any school's dress code is, like, like you you, you can't see your stomach, right? Like, like that's the rule. So, um... If your shirt doesn't like 
meet where your pants go, then you're out of dress code, right? And yeah. it's like, but what if it's that much? That's not a problem. And it's like, I mean, I technically kind of agree, but if that much isn't a problem, then neither is that much, and neither is that much, and neither is that much, and neither is that much. And then eventually we get to... But that's just a slippery slope fallacy. So, I mean, you can say that, but if you're going to have a rule, the rule has to be standardized and fair. We, mm-hmm. You can't say, there's no way to say that, okay, sure, well, actually, you just say it's a little it's more over simple an than inch, that. Then it's over the limit. There you go. If it's less than an inch, who cares? That, I mean, that's a very easy way okay. to solve the whole thing. But it's not, because then what you, because that's invasive. Because what you'd have to do is be like, okay, now you got to go to the office, and they have to take out a fucking ruler and hold it up to you. So it, if you just say, the rule is... You just have to, your pants just have to go to where your, or your shirt has to go to where your pants are. There, the end. It applies to absolutely everybody and it just, it works. Um, and mm-hmm. it's not invasive and it's, it's fair. Like you have to choose to break the rule. So like, don't cry about whatever. And then the thing with hats is like, if a hat's okay, then why is like, eventually you just get to something silly like, why is a mask not okay? But what's funny is schools are letting kids wear you know, the, the COVID masks yeah. still, and just a lot of kids are just insecure and that's why they do it. I had, I had two students last year. One of them, I legitimately never saw her face. The other one, I saw her face like two times the entire year. Um, but yeah, well, <laughs> it was funny. On like the second to last day of school, I said, tomorrow, can we get a face reveal? And she was like, no. I'm like, well, okay, never mind then. <laughs> So, uh, I, stayed, I stayed at a hostel in like 2021 in Miami and they were like, you know, at a hostel where you have like a, a group of people like on bunk beds and stuff and shared bathrooms. There was a bunch of like uh, vaccine tourists from South America that came to like Florida to get the COVID vaccine because it wasn't available in their country. And I had never seen anyone take like you know, the mask wearing as seriously. I mean, I never, like, we were staying in the same room. Like, at night, while they were sleeping, they were wearing the mask. When they got out of the shower, they had the mask on. Like, I, I never saw their face and, like, not sleeping, not shower, like, like never, ever took the mask off. That's pretty weird. I mean, it can be healthy to wear one. Like, in the wintertime, if more people wore it, then, like, flu deaths would go down. Um... But, like, if you're driving in your car by yourself down the highway and you're wearing one, then I'm like, what are you doing? You know, usually I feel like I would just forget that I'm even wearing it when that would happen. I would have it on. I'd be going about my business and I would get in the car and start driving, think about my next destination. And I just forget it's even on. Like, I I feel like I feel like I have big ears and they always hurt my ears. So I the second I get in my car, I'm like. Well, not anymore, I guess. But I used to be like, "Oh, sweet relief, my God!" Uh, it well, hurts. I used to, I used to <laughs> work in inside of operating rooms, so I was used to like wearing a mask for like hours and hours on end for like procedures. So, yeah, so just I got used, used to it. Before the pandemic. I I are, wish are I, you a, I'm not cool enough. Are you a beta if you wear a mask, or if or are you a beta if you can't take wearing a mask? Yeah, definitely the latter. You know. Like, the real alpha move is to not give a shit and not even notice if you have a mask on or not. Maybe the real alpha move is to, you know, not listen to what other betas think about it. Because, you know, me personally, I'm just that kind of alpha. You know, your guys' opinion doesn't faze me. What I did... Yeah, but if you're so sensitive, if your little eels are so sensitive (laughs) that you can't even wear a mask, I mean, that's not very alpha, is it? No, I, I never complained about wearing it. I just said once I get to a place where I don't have to anymore... I'm very oh, happy to okay. take it so off. Okay, so once you're away from other people and, and all of their scary opinions and you're in your car, you're like, oh, thank you. Such relief from my mask. Yes, it's their okay. opinions that I'm, I'm you know, when I go out in public, it's a constant struggle to try to fit in. Because I know, I feel like Mark Zuckerberg, whenever he's in a room of people that aren't reptiles, you know, it's just very hard to fit in. Dang, you, you feel like an alien? Like, I, that's crazy that you feel like Mark Zuckerberg. I don't, I don't know if anyone has ever related to Mark Zuckerberg before now. Yeah, you know, maybe, maybe uh, Mark Zuckerberg will somehow find this one day, and then he'll be my best friend, and then I can just be awkward with him around other people. That's what's up, man. If I had a billionaire friend, man, I don't care if he's a reptilian. Yeah, 
you know, at that point, it's fine by me. Uh, I What I did during Peterson. the pandemic was I gave COVID Peterson. So that was huh? the that was the true alpha move. Peterson. What? You told me to come back with a story from Kansas City. Oh, and yeah, I did. I think, I think you fucking ruined the first day of my trip. You, you manifested something that should have never happened. This is right. a post hoc ergo propter hoc fallacy, which is actually the next fallacy I'm doing for my YouTube channel. But go ahead. Yeah, whatever you just said. No, nah, you you made this happen. This is your fault, okay? Because we showed up. All right, we had made reservations for our hotel on Wednesday. All right, so we showed up on what was it? Saturday morning. Uh, we watched the fights at or like the UFC fights at a Buffalo Wild Wings, and then we went to go check in at three. And when we showed up, um, they said they didn't even have our room. But the weirder part was that there was some guy standing outside holding, like, a, a towel that looks like it's just covered in mud. He's wearing his Rick and Morty, you know, button-up shirt. He's wearing open-toed shoes and just kind of standing there, just kind of rocking back and forth, hoping that somebody at the desk is going to help him. They, they just don't, though. But, yeah, they, they don't have our room, so we're like, fuck, all right, we get our refund, and we go back to the car, and then they call us So they just immediately gave your room after. to somebody else, or what? They, they told us that they have rooms that are being renovated, and for some reason they keep getting put back up on the website, uh. and there's nothing they can do about it. But maybe, you know, call me before, maybe check your reservations, I don't know. I guess. But... They, they ended up calling us like 30 seconds after we walked away and said they'll have a room ready for us in an hour. Well, I already felt a little uncomfortable with the place because it looked kind of trashy. So I was like, oh, you know, okay, yeah, sounds good. And then we just went and found another place that was, you know, a, a name brand, right? We went to a Days Inn. Nothing expensive. It's not nice. I expected it to be nice enough, though, for the price. It was fucking terrible. <laughs> <laughs> we show up and there's a for lack of better terms very promiscuous lady standing outside nice uh, <laughs> yeah she's smoking an entire black and mild to herself and there's some guy walking around fucking like carrying a shower mat and he's missing teeth and like making a bunch of weird comments at her we ignore that i'm like fuck it i'm gonna ignore that i'm gonna give this place a chance and see how it is because it's a day's in. I thought it would be nice enough. So we go and get a room. It, it was, you know, not all that expensive, like 88 bucks for the night. Not terrible. And uh, we open the door, and immediately all the sheets, pillows, and everything are just in a big pile. They look like they're, like, covered in shit and blood or something. Oh, God. <laughs> and then on the ground, right once you open the door, there's, like, a smashed Twinkie on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> the room is just an absolute fucking mess. So it came with a continental so <laughs> breakfast, okay. okay. I, yeah, I that was that was our free breakfast. I want to say that you're just probably ignorant of Kansas City culture. The smash <laughs> twinkie on the ground is actually a welcome gift in their culture. Yeah, it very well could have been. You know, maybe that lady had the room before and she's just trying to leave us something nice. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It, it's like a it's perceived as a gift in in, in the Midwest. But and uh, can I tell a, this... a quick Kansas City story of my own? Yeah, go for it. I actually it. met George R. R. Martin, the author of Game of Thrones, at a bar in Kansas City. Was and it anything I... like the South Park episode where the boys <laughs> meet him? Did he just talk about horse cock the whole time? <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, it didn't. Somehow it didn't come up. But I, I, hmm. I like, was like, somehow. are you? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, oh, shit. And like at the time, I was in college. and uh, Or I was just graduated from college. And I had, like, written, like, a fantasy series in college, and I had, like, a little business card, like, Grace and Huck, and then, like, the name of my book on it, and it was all done up like a fantasy author. I'm like, dude, I went up to George R. R. Martin, I was like, I know you don't know me, I know you are you get annoying, like, you know, meetings from fans all the time, but I would never forgive myself if I met you and I didn't give you my card here. And I gave it to him, he looked at me like, Grace and Huck, that's a great author name, and I'm like... Thanks, look for it on bookshelves. And then, like, you know, I was like, okay, you can go throw away that business card in the trash. Just don't let me see it. And then, like, I shook his hand. I, I think I asked him a couple questions. But the main thing I remembered was this man had a strong handshake. 
And that made me feel so much better. I was like, okay, he's got some years <laughs> left in him. We could see winds of winter. Um, granted, that was like five, six, seven years ago now. So I don't know. But at the time, I was like, this man has some vitality left. You know what I mean? It does, made me he, feel uh, th- does he always wear the hat? Was he wearing the hat? He was wearing the hat. That's good. Mm-hmm. That makes me happy. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so and but, I don't know what he was doing in Kansas City. Like I was just kind of like going through. I was at this bar downtown, and I was just like, "Hold on, <laughs> it's awesome." All right, back to the your uh, twenty dollar hotel. Um, yeah, yeah. So uh, you know that was the one chance I was willing to give the place. So we go back to the front desk and we tell the guy like, "Hey, yeah, that room was a mess. There's like a smashed Twinkie and you know shitty bloody sheets on the <laughs> on the bed. I don't know." <laughs> And he was like, oh, yeah, uh, we were just going to move you to room 168. And I was like, look, all right, I was willing to look past the fact that this place seems like a place where you just get stabbed for going to the vending machine. Um, I, I'm good. I asked for the refund. And after that, it was fine. Right? We, I ended up actually calling my dad. And I was like, hey, could you just, like, book a nicer hotel and I'll just pay you when I get back? And he did that. He found one in, like, 15 minutes. So that was all good. But That's good. I think if you had never told me to come back with a story, then none of that would have ever happened. Because my original thought on the drive out there, I was even talking to my girlfriend about it. I was like, oh, yeah, maybe we could go, like, argue with the Scientologists or something, you know? Go tell them they look like they're ready to park someone's car. Their shoes are too big for them. So just something. But that didn't even happen. We didn't get to fuck with Scientologists because instead Kansas City wanted to just have its way with me. When I stayed in Vegas, I got a. We stayed at the Excalibur, and I got a. I got a suite for like, I think it was like maybe a hundred and twenty dollars, but it had a living room, a bar, two bathrooms. The king size bedroom was like completely separate from the rest of it, and there was a there was a spa inside of it, and everything. It's crazy how cheap they are. I like. I will stay at a Motel Six. I stayed at one in Rapid City once, and it was super. It was. So it wasn't fancy, but it was really nice. All the paint was really new. The like the the furniture in it looked like it was like made out of plywood, but it was really well done, like IKEA furniture, you know. And it was just like it was nice. It was fine. But man, I've stayed at some other ones where like uh, I went to visit my mom once, and I stayed in this. I I just got a cheap one because I was making like thirty three thousand dollars a year as a teacher. So I didn't have a lot of expendable income. And I found a crumpled up McDonald's bag inside one of the dresser drawers. Uh, it, really? was, it was it was so filthy, dirty. The shower was disgusting. And the shower head only went up to like here. And I'm average height. So yeah, I've, I've been burned by some hotels before. But I like I don't mind staying at a place like a Motel 6 or something like that, you know? Apparently... My parents found a motel three and a half. Uh-huh. Apparently, that's a thing. I tried Googling it. I couldn't find it. But my mom and dad both told me the exact same story separately. Wow. They confirmed it, you know, individually. At and at least it's more than 50% <laughs> of a motel six. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's true. My question is like, is it just the lower the number, the worse it is? <laughs> It could be know. like golf. Maybe Motel One is the best. Yeah, maybe it. Maybe that's like a five star resort. You know, you just gotta find it. Maybe you gotta go to like, uh, I don't know, like Tijuana I found or something. Motel One. <laughs> <laughs> I think that where I where I went to college, I forgot about this. I think Aberdeen, South Dakota, was where the very first Super Eight hotel opened. Right, that's a hotel, right? Super Eight Hotel. Is it? Uh, would that technically be a motel? Uh maybe. What's the difference? Is it just that one has an H and one has an M? Hotel motel. No, I think motel is more for motorists, like on the on a road trip or something, or you know, it's like a it's like a motor hotel kind of a thing. It's more for like motorists to come through for a night or something, and then a hotel is more for like a destination where you're staying at the hotel as your vacation. Yeah, that's fair enough. That, that's w- why they're cheaper. I was correct. The first Super 8 with 60 rooms opened in Aberdeen, South Dakota in 1974. It's the 50th anniversary. That's a gold yeah, ring, right? Crazy. 50th anniversary gold ring. 
My one year anniversary is coming up. I think for one year, is it like tinfoil or what is it? Um, whatever they made the uh, the stuff they went to the moon with, you know, tinfoil. No, okay, and, um, dude, I I love when flat earthers and shit try to <laughs> say they they went to the moon with tinfoil and cardboard. I could have made that. No, you couldn't have, Ron. Um, <laughs> you mentioned George R. R. Martin earlier. I've never. The most famous person I've ever met is Tommy Emmanuel, which like not very many people know who he is, but he's a I don't know who that he's, is. He's a absolutely otherworldly guitar player. But I walked by that college I was talking about earlier back in South Dakota. It's consistently ranked in the top five tech colleges in the in the country. Um, Obama wow. gave the commencement speech there my first year I was teaching there. So that was pretty cool. That was the only time he ever came to our state during his presidency. But um, uh, and we were the last state he ever visited. He went to all of them, and we we were last for some reason. Um, but uh, Mike he Rowe was there, there. <clears throat> cause he's like dirty job since a tech school. It's very agrarian. There's a lot of like agriculture and like welding and stuff like that. But they also have like cosmetology and whatever else. But so, yeah, he was there, and. That dude must have a lot of money because he traveled with an entourage. There were like three black, completely blacked out um, Tahoes outside, like waiting for him, like a, like like a presidential, um, yeah. whatever you call it, motorcade or whatever. But I was I was having lunch there, like I always do, and then like we walked by each other, and um, he went into the. Did I what? Did you feel a spark? Well, he didn't even look at me, so no. But, like, we walked by each other, and he went into the bathroom. Did you, did you feel negged? I, I mean, I just think somebody like him gets... If if I were him, the amount of attention he gets, he probably just either purposely or because he's just been desensitized to it, he just can't afford to pay attention to anybody. That's how I would... I, I don't know. I feel like I would be like that if I were him. But we walked by each other, and he went into the bathroom, and as I was walking, I was like, I actually do really have to pee. And it would be kind of cool to be like, holy crap, you're Mike Rowe. But I was like, uh, maybe he'd shoot me, though, because we'd be the only people in the He's like, oh, I'm a celebrity. I'm in the bathroom. I'm the only person in here. Some guy comes in and be like, are you Mike Rowe? And there we go. And so Just make sure that you stand between him and the door out. Yeah, you got you to go to the <laughs> urinal directly yeah, next to yeah, him. Break the code. Doing. <laughs> that's no, actually no, what I was code just to meet him. Code. Go right behind him while he's using the urinal. Are, are you Mike Rowe? <laughs> <laughs> or just, or just, or just pull up next to him and do one of these. <laughs> Look over the little <laughs> wall. <laughs> Here's what you do: you you go to the urinal next to him. You you peel over. You peer over. You go. Now that looks like a dirty job. <laughs> <laughs> that's the way. A hundred percent. Oh, yeah. man. Well, you, you might get the option of getting shot at that point. You might up the chances if that's your approach. Maybe maybe just wait outside the bathroom and be like, I saw you go in there. <laughs> <laughs> wait, oh, dude, that's a good one, too. Like, when he comes out of the bathroom, you're like, now I'm curious. Does Mike Rowe wash his hands? Or is it a dirty, you know, like, like he's famous for doing dirty jobs. Does he wash his hands after he goes to the bathroom? Yeah. I have a friend who definitely doesn't. No matter what, anytime I see his hands, they're like completely blacked out, just covered in who knows what. It's it's awful. When I'm at work, I get covered in a bunch of dust, and I wash my hands like 15 times a day. I can't stand it. But he, he'll just eat a sandwich with his hands covered in, I don't know, grease, shit, whatever. Uh, I don't, who knows? Has anyone <laughs> at your workplace ever heard of gloves yeah we we have those they're just really inconvenient a lot of the time uh because they suck they're not good gloves <laughs> okay well have you ever heard of electrocuting your skin of your hand enough to where not only does it become bulletproof but the dust will no longer stick to it oh yeah you know i heard that from sensei uh, ron one time he told me all about that <laughs> You gotta start the electroshock. I'm telling you. They're yeah, trying you know, to. Uh, anyone got a birdcage? <laughs> I read about this a while ago for uh, 
the moon suits for the next generation of people that are going to oh, go yeah. there to keep the cuz the the lunar dust is sharp cuz there's like no there's no erosion there um which is why the footprints look really crisp um but uh they're trying to figure out cuz it it cuts up the suits so it's really damaging so they built a technology where if you apply a voltage to the suit it just like uh, blasts all the dust off of it, but I can't. There's there's like really significant problems with it at the same time. Like it works, but like building a suit that's made out of the stuff would either be, it either just like doesn't work or it would be too expensive or I can't remember what the specific problem what did, uh, is. But. What did you think of the new suits? Because I honestly was underwhelmed. Like when I heard that they were going to be partnering with like Prada, like a fashion designer. And I'm like, dude, <laughs> this is going to be the most like decked out, like American ass spacesuit ever. And then they came out with it. And I'm like, all of these fancy fashion designers. And it looks exactly like the Chinese spacesuit. Like it barely looks any different at all. Like even are, down to the red accent marks. You're talking are those about the, the ones, ones where they're like, look super yeah. robotic. They can't really move their joints very well because they have the fixed points of movement. No, this one's, these ones were just unveiled, like, a couple months ago. Oh, I don't think I've seen them. Like, they're the new generation of spacesuits designed by Prada and, I think, this company... Yeah, it's for Artemis. It's, like, Axiom or something like that. The, they made them. The but black if you look orange. at them... It, um, no, they're they're white and, like, red-colored. Um, oh. They, I can try to share my screen and, and try to find them. Um, but when you look at them side-by-side side with just like the current iteration of the Chinese spacesuits, like they really don't look that different. <laughs> and I was just very <laughs> disappointed. I thought I really wanted them to look baller as fuck. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, my my thought on that, like when I look at stuff from like Apollo and all that, I there is a, <clears throat> or when you look, like when you watch a space movie, but then you look at what the International Space Station actually looks like and it, it looks like hoarders live in it, you know? I'm just like, mm -hmm. well, I mean... It has to be functional over absolutely basically everything else. And they they have like severe limitations. So like it just needs to and like like they're in space. So if anything goes wrong, you're fucking dead. So it's gonna it's gonna be the most like brutal form following function. It just needs to work kind of thing. You know, you can't there's just no room to pack luxury or style into something like that that's just kind of how i feel about it so i don't like i don't know i i agree with you aesthetically that it's like well i want to be proud of it you know but at the same time i you know. i think i have a solution to the problem you brought up though um where you know they're putting a charge into the suit or whatever and it, it or a voltage and it you know can kind of repel the dust uh you know those things you used to get like the Dollar Tree, where you can shake your friend's hand and shock him. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just cover yourself in a bunch of those, you know. Like that, I feel like that's a good solution. You fall down and you just. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think those things actually shocked you. I think it was. I think it just vibrated. I'm pretty yeah, sure. I think that's so what it too. Was. Yeah. You know. You know. I just. It's the, not necessarily that I want to see like a cool aesthetic just so I could feel proud or whatever. It's like, I want to feel like I'm living in the damn future. Uh, when I see yeah, the astronauts, I don't want them to look like the astronauts back in the sixties. I want it to be like the cool 2001 model, you know, like, like the cool sci-fi astronauts. Give me those. I want to live in the future already. Damn it. Well, you know, the new, uh, the new USPS trucks, those look pretty futuristic. Yeah, but that's like the lame future. That those <laughs> that's not future. some cool future timeline. Yeah, we're, we're we are in the lame future right now. I keep seeing all these new like EVs come out, and I'm like, oh, dude, this is gonna be cool. And then it actually drops, and it it looks like a fucking potato on wheels. Yeah, <laughs> dude, they I, always look terrible for some reason. I heard Rivian loses three hundred thousand dollars for every car they sell, so they're Ooh. Rivian. You've well, seen no, said, oh. you've you've seen Rivian vehicles yes. before, I'm sure, but yeah, no, I have. I I was saying, whoa, not who. <laughs> oh, I thought actually, I thought Tyler said it, and I thought oh, he said who. 
Yeah, I have seen the crow. Yeah, these things are disgusting. I really? I think they actually look really cool. But yeah, they must be I, subsidized uh, out the ass because that's uh, to lose three hundred thousand dollars for they, everyone. They look like they. They look like they have, have the Dyson bladeless fans. Thing. Sorry, sorry. What was that? I was asking, have you guys ever seen anyone that thinks that the Cybertruck is actually cool looking and not like the ugliest thing you've ever seen on wheels? I have I have thoughts about this, but Tyler, you go first. Yeah, unfortunately, I do know a couple people who simp for the Cybertruck. Um, they're, I don't know. They're, what else do these people like? Like, not they're trendy. Like, what else do they find aesthetically pleasing? I, I have to know. I mean, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, I feel like it's just trendy. It's not that it has a certain aesthetic or anything to it. Maybe people really like the sharp corners or whatever. But when what I look at like? this, oh, dude, definitely EDM. So Without the people that like Cybertruck, they like EDM music? <laughs> it has to be. I mean, what else would make sense? Well, I was asking the people that you know that like the aesthetic, what music do they like? Oh, well, one of them is my coworker, and, uh... <sighs> I, I don't know. He's all over the place, if I'm being completely honest. He he doesn't really have any one specific genre, but it's all very soft music, very slow stuff. Nothing that would really get you hype. You know, you can't wake up in the morning to this stuff. But um, they're just too big, and they don't function as good as like a pickup for actual truck activities. They don't yeah, even they... fit together right. <laughs> no, yeah, they're they're pretty. So. Let me see if I can uh, I'm gonna pull something up for you guys because I have specific thoughts about this. Um, it's gonna take me a second. Oh yeah, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind having one. Um, okay. I just so. heard that the interior feels really cheap. Um, at I least in the older I ones. You if I paid much attention to the interior, but I took. Okay, can you guys see this orange car? Did I share my screen? Okay, so do you think that this car is ugly? Okay, Tyler, what do you think? Okay, so what I would say about this car is I wouldn't necessarily say that it's, like, pretty or or anything like that. It certainly isn't, like, elegant or austere or um, subtle, but I don't think it's ugly. I think it falls into a different category. This car is cool. Don't you think this car looks cool? Really? <laughs> that of a toddler. Like, the way that they rounded out all these corners, the disgusting, loud, garish choice of color. Like, everything about this screams that whoever drives this has no cool factor at all. Like, they have no gas, no riz. I'm sorry. I, like, this I, is not cool. It's not attractive. It is an ugly as little tiny baby dick car so, so you're tapping out you're not you're not you're not tapped into that at all not i'm tapped a hundred percent out yeah okay so I, I, I think uh i think it has some appeal i think in a different color it would potentially look better but yeah o overall like i said that's maybe a solid like three and a half out of ten it's not great it's not the worst i've seen though by any means so I, yeah, I totally screwed up. So I, I changed the, the screen on OBS and nobody could hear you guys until I switched it back. But anyways, so Are you su serious? suffice to say, well, they, they heard everything you said over the last minute, but not like the most recent things. So suffice to say, they don't think it's a cool looking car at all. That's why I think that was Peterson. Honestly, that was my favorite thing I've said all stream. And I was, I was like, that was the best quote of the stream. Honestly. Well, we got the, yeah, we got the latter yeah, part of it. Back. So I think that, and it's, if you don't know, it's a Gumpert Apollo and it's like uh, a few years ago, it was one of the fastest cars ever made. And it's, it's basically like a race car and it's built like, I mean, you can think of it like um, a, 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 something built for an Apollo program. It's just functional and it's extremely good what it does like a formula one car i don't think formula one cars are pretty but i don't think they're ugly i think they're cool looking and to me at least that like with cars that's a completely different type of aesthetic something can be not good looking but not ugly 
because I think it's cool. This to me is a cool car. I don't think the Cybertruck is cool um, like at all. So I, I think that, that that is ugly. And there are other like, there are cars that are supposed to be cool, but are actually just ugly. The The newest Ferrari that came out, I think the F60 or, or F80 is what it is now. I think that thing looks absolutely terrible. I don't think that's a good looking I, car at all. I don't like like all the new Mustangs and stuff. It's like, yeah, performance wise, they're cool or whatever, but they all look the exact same. It's like, they're not, it's like new iPhones. I feel like they change one little thing. You know, they add a 98th camera to your phone for some reason. And that's it. It's, I don't know, just stuff like that. I feel like they stop trying. Every car is just, you know, a cookie cutter version of the other. Like, uh, hey, you can copy me. Just don't make it too obvious. I... To summarize what I had said about your little pump, your orange pumpkin car, I think I said it was flagless, <laughs> rizless, uh, baby dicked, and that whoever drove it is like a pussy repellent, the opposite of cool. Yeah, pussy, so. re- pussy repellent. I mean, I, I can definitely see that a girl wouldn't think that that car is interesting, but this is a car like, like guys would think, damn, that thing is cool. Like, a, like, do you guys think that old steam engines are cool? No. Yeah, kind of. Do you even have autism, Grayson? Why did we invite you here? <laughs> like, what the? F- why? I, I, I don't know why you're here actually at this point. Um, but I think they're cool. But I don't think they're. I don't think they're pretty. Um, in any kind of way, they're just like they're they're badass and they're they're cool. Um, Concord. Concord's like really ugly. The <laughs> the nose, you know. <laughs> but it's cool. The droop. Yeah, snoop. the plane. <laughs> the droop. The plane? Yeah, I, thought, yeah. I think the plane is cool for Concords. Yeah, I mean, it's well, not like a black hawk or anything, but it's still a cool plane. Yeah, no, I think it's cool too. I don't think it's good looking. The SR seventy one, it's pretty good looking. I would say. Yeah, it's like one of the coolest planes. I mean, that and like maybe like the stealth bombers are some of my favorites. <laughs> yeah, like the Nighthawk. That's not. It's not good looking, but it's cool looking. Mm-hmm. See what I mean? You know what I mean. You just don't think the Gumpert Apollo is a cool looking I actually, car. I don't know. I kind of feel like if it's cool, then it's good looking. I, I, it's hard for me to think of an example of something that I think is not good looking, but cool. I, I, I'm struggling to think of an example on my own end. Usually, if I think something is cool, that means I think it's good looking. Well, and I think there needs to be a distinction because like, I think of it like uh, even with UFC fighters, stuff like that. You don't have to be technically great. You don't have to look great. It's just if you can get the job done in a you know an efficient fashion, I guess. That's really all that matters. And I think that puts you... You know, you can be great without being cool. You can be great without being pretty, stuff like that. I, I think, uh, I don't know, it kind of falls, like you said at first, into its own category. And I feel like cool might even be a little too vague... Because, uh, I don't know, something can be cool, or something can be, sorry, lame, and still be great at what it does. You know, like, look at you. Oh, man, you're you're lame, but you're a great beta. So, like, I don't oh, know, man, badass, example, is that the word? What? So, like, badass instead of cool, or I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, uh... Hey, Globe, Globe Man, what's an example of something that you think is cool, but not aesthetically good-looking? Uh... Like, that's a car or a, a, a plane or a boat or something. Uh, Derek Lewis. I don't even know if you know who that is. Nope. You can, you, no. it, 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 he's a UFC fighter, and yeah, it's not pretty. He's flashed his ass on national television, international television a couple times. Oh, this times. is the guy who said his balls got hot. That's why he yeah, took his pants off. Yeah, after yeah, a fight, he took his pants off and said, my balls was hot. Okay, wait, 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 wait. To be fair, okay, the balls have a really good exchange with the temperature environment. So if you are feeling hot, the fastest way to cool down, short of like exposing your head to some cool air, is to expose your balls. The balls will cool down the rest of your body faster than anything else. So there is science behind that. I'm just saying. There's some science behind the fact that uh, that quote got him uh, a sponsorship with Manscaped too. So now his balls stay cool. That, that was the whole that's, thing. That's such a good motto. Now my balls stay cool. Like, <laughs> Dude, Manscaped, they're, they're marketing. Fucking, I have to admit, it's damn good. 
But I was asking more about like vehicles, and you gave me like a person. So I don't know. Yeah, if you're well, I, this guy I, or but like I feel oh, like that's know, a no. Derek Lewis is. I love Derek like Lewis. Them. Yeah, you know Derek Lewis. You know he's he's a big guy. He doesn't look great, but he's got the most knockouts in UFC history. He's he's a beast. He puts people to sleep. He's great at what he does. Yeah, but so, I'm I mean, talking about human beings when I'm talking about, well, that, because there are plenty of human beings that I don't think are aesthetically good looking that I think are cool. Like, they, yeah. there's like literally probably more human beings that I think are cool that are not aesthetically pleasing to me. So I can think of tons of humans. Well, I was talking I, about I gave you, technology, cars, vehicles, I, buildings. Something I gave bad. you I gave you a fantastic answer and you're grilling me over here, okay? You you and Peterson are both, you know, the biggest betas that I know as of today. You didn't get your mic working. So, you know, Alpha Card is still revoked at the moment. Alpha card. Damn, that really was a low flow, man. You knew, you knew. I explained to you backstage that I got a new microphone and I just haven't gotten it working yet. You knew that was that was coming in too close, too close to home. Okay, we're, you, know, you know what? I'm sorry, I, because I can't think of anything else to talk about at the moment. We're gonna look at cars, and we're gonna we're just gonna do votes on cool. I, or... I just want to point out that we Wait, literally have like one of the most consequential elections of all time coming up next week. But if we really can't think of anything else to talk about, I'm actually would much prefer to talk about cars. <laughs> well, you know, like like Pete Davison said. All right, it's the most important election of our lives until the next one. <laughs> Yeah, but he was wrong and dumb to say that. Okay. Yeah. Is this? But you know, he's funny guy. Is Wait. This... By the way, can they hear us while you're streaming? Yeah, yeah. I ch I changed I it. Know. They can hear you. A Countach okay. is a kun a Countach is. Do you think this is pretty? Because I don't think so. No. No. But isn't it they, all cool? this is is like eighties cocaine? That's it. Yeah. yeah this, this looks like a. This looks like that car that you see in those retro wave edits, you know, where it's driving on like the the cyber sunset. You know what I mean? I don't yeah. know if you guys know. Yeah, yeah. That, this is like the the classic car that's always in that. I I think this is okay. It's not like the prettiest, but I like it. Okay, give me I, like a nice. I need BMW to make one of those. Or Maserati or something, you know. I need to make one of those graphs, you know, like the political compass thing, where it's like pretty ugly, cool, not cool, and like put these put these cars in those spots. I um, also a Venn diagram. <laughs> I also think that Ferraris are like massively overrated, and the company really annoys me because if you change the color, like if you customize your Ferrari at all, then you're banned for life from Ferrari. Like you can yeah. no longer buy Ferraris if you like change the colors or if you anyway obscure the Ferrari logo, they ban you forever. Yeah, it's pretty stupid. That's, That's just like conscious. brand protection. Do you think this is a good looking car? <sighs> no, the, the weird band of black in the front is just yeah, like a unibrow. It. It's weird. I hate yeah, that. I, I, I hate I the say... vents in the in the under the headlights too. Yeah. Yeah, I would say, you know, at least for its class of car, yeah, I would say that's probably like a maybe a five out of ten. It's not this again, angle's not bad. This angle's pretty good. I think that I think that that's pretty decent. But the I don't like the back end. That, really, I do like the back end. I think that's cool. But this is just oh, I I do not like anything about it. So, so like, said the green grass behind the last car is pretty. <laughs> yeah, sure. I mean. <laughs> if, if that's the best you can do um yeah i don't know actually those are that was the only other example i specifically wanted to go over what about like um like bmw has some really nice aesthetic cars that i think look very futuristic and cool like especially some of like their like uh, pro uh their uh prototypes or like the i8 is a good one i mean i, I don't know I, I like lexus has a lot of cool designs um Maserati has some cool ones like a lot of their like future end like the EV demos that they're coming up with I look so much cooler than Rivian or Tesla or the fucking Cybertruck. Yeah, well I think Rivians are really are really good looking. Um they're yeah. mid. I think they're mid on EVs. Really? They're right in the middle. Really? Well like there's there's not a lot of ones above it, but that's just because we don't have a very developed market yet, but I I just think that they're mid for me. Hmm. Oh man, did wow! Well, you get? Do you guys watch the NBA at all? I don't know what that is. Nope. The National I, I Basketball watch. Association. I thought you said NBA. No NBA. 
Okay. Yeah, I knew that was the basketball one, but I don't think I've ever watched it. They I watch people beat each other up. That's about it. Yeah, uh, there, there's, there are all these complaints. They, they have special what are called city jerseys um, that they've been doing every year for a while, and the ones this year, so many of them are just absolutely horrendous. Um, and there's all this talk about how it's specifically being ruined by minimalist designing where like the, mm-hmm. there's just like it's very plain and there's just like one thing on the here i'll show yeah. you i'll show you what they look like i think some there's, of these are really like, good uh, that freaking like corporate I, uh, art style that's caught on in like the 2010s and stuff it's so bad the the worst one i felt by far was the celtics one over here it just it looks like it's a practice so jersey you know Wait, what's, what's the one next to it? Is somebody just land? Cleveland. They call it the land. Cleveland. Which is kind of cool. <laughs> My Wait, name is Cleveland Brown. <laughs> yeah. Like this <laughs> Pistons one, that one's that one's cool. The indie one, that that's cool. But Lake Show, that's absolutely horrible. Um, this just says Memphis on it. The Oklahoma uh, one Oklahoma. that ain't. The Minnesota bad. one looks like something you would see on like a dude at the gas station buying, you know, uh, Newports. Uh, yeah, I don't. I think yeah. Oklahoma is actually the coolest one. It's not bad. Uh, the Valley one's really good. The Toronto one is the best one by far, and I will hear nothing else of it. But because yeah. they put they brought back the Raptor, um, and the Bucks. That's so boring too. Yeah, it's it's really. It's it's pretty bad. The Mavericks one. Well, I'm a Mavericks fan. I can't that give away bad. any specific details on this. The Utah but one's good of too. Back the Raptors. Uh, I know someone who just discovered a new species of raptor, and they are working on publishing it right now. So I can't provide any details, but like new raptor inbound, it's dropping, and I know the guy that found it, or slash girl. I don't want to reveal guy slash girl. Well, here's the real question, okay? Um, can you confirm whether or not there's going to be another Jurassic Park movie where it'll be involved? Dude, I'm actually, like, the next Jurassic Park movie I am low-key excited for. They're bringing what? back the original screenplay, like, the, the original script writer, and Scarlett Johansson is going to be the star, and she's apparently, like, a lifelong huge Jurassic Park fan and super passionate about the series, and she's, like, actually putting a lot of energy and effort into this to make it good and i'm low-key pretty excited for it bringing back the original writers is a good move it's called like i think jurassic birth or jurassic park rebirth or something like they're restarting the franchise next year i could man, be good. Just, it could be good jurassic world dominion was one of the worst movies i've ever seen in yeah. my life i was so pissed off about it. i okay. thought jurassic world was actually pretty good a lot of people were like eh, it kind of sucks i was like yeah. i mean Look, I'm not a film nerd, and I don't watch a movie and sit there and be like, oh, my God, the depth of the characters and blah, blah, blah. So, like, I, I'm not that kind of person. So, like, I can I can see how a critic would think that it was that maybe balls, but I thought it was I thought it was pretty good. Um, the second one then and then what the hell was the second one called? Fallen remember. Kingdom. Oh, yeah. Fallen Kingdom. It, it was it, it wasn't that bad. Um it was. It I mean, was I, I would man. give it. I would give it like a C plus. <laughs> Do you yeah. remember the entire second half of that movie? Like, literally, just became like a horror movie of like them in a house with a weird like. Yeah, and there was like the no Nosferatu like claw. Yeah, like the little claw. Like, what yeah, that was, was that. That's not Jurassic Park. <laughs> well, actually, Jurassic Park is a horror movie. Yeah, but the first not in is. somebody's random house, man. At Jurassic Park. <laughs> yeah. So okay, maybe maybe C minus, but. Um, and the last one was really, really just abysmal. F minus. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was. It was. Um, the last Jedi bad. Yeah, like there are there are movies that are so bad that they're fun to watch, and you can like drink a few beers or something. Yeah, they're supposed them, to be like, bad. But like this movie was the bad in a way that you cannot even have fun watching it. Like it's the anti fun. <laughs> yeah, that that's why I feel like I would be a terrible film critic because uh, I don't know. I don't like peterson said i don't judge a movie based on like oh man they really built this character or built the relationship so well i base it off whether or not it was just enjoyable there are movies that are terrible but you watch them and it's like it's yeah. so bad that it becomes kind of good like it's almost entertaining how bad it is have you guys seen Killer but yeah Clown the new space dude yeah yes. <laughs> yes or even um 
Oh, what was the one with the... Gosh, what was it? Like, the demon leprechaun. The fuck was that called? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's just called leprechaun. Yeah. It's I think I think you're right. Yeah. And they just kept making There's multiple them. of those, too. Have you seen, yeah. uh, have you seen <laughs> Trolls with the legendary line and, and acting delivery of, Oh, my God. They're eating her. Then they're going to eat me. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah, trolls. Best. Trolls has a weird cult following. They turn people into plants so that they can eat them. It's it's pretty funny. Um, I say so. I kind of do get into that really like analysis of film. Like I was a film minor in college, and like I've written my own novels before. So like I do get into like how are they writing this? How's the script? How's the character development and the plotting? Like I, I and like the cinematography, I am getting into all that stuff. So like, I, just know that like, from somebody that does get into film and somebody that doesn't care about any of that stuff, this film is double ass. Do not and, see the last Jurassic World movie. No, don't. Can you, no. can you like separate those? Like, can you change the mindset? Can you watch a movie and just sit there and just for the pure entertainment of it? Versus go into it with the mindset of like actually trying to analyze it, or has your brain been hardwired to see it one way versus the other? Um, I mean, I can still enjoy a movie that's bad. Like I said, I can have fun with a bad movie, and I can still enjoy myself. But I'm still like, this is like technically very poorly done, and like I'm just having fun with it and enjoying it. But I feel like at this point, it's just my taste. You know, like my right. taste is going to be towards stuff that I'm like. Every single shot, I'm just in awe of, like, the technical mastery of, like, how are they getting this shot? How did they do this? Like, this, everything was just so perfect. It's, like, visual poetry. And, like, so I can appreciate, like, this is part, part of my taste. If, if that's going on in a film and I can appreciate it on that, like, detailed level of appreciation, I'm just gonna, those are the movies I like more, you know? Right. Yeah, I... Oh. I don't know. I like stupid stuff. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, stupid stupid movies are are good. So, like we were Grayson, we were talking about this. Like Napoleon, I'd probably watch it again because it's 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 I would not. the cinematography. Well, so the the historical inaccuracies are are unforgivable to the point where you can't watch it, even though cinematography wise. I would say that really I could good. go back and rewatch the, the, the battle sequences in Napoleon because those are really excellently done. Like some of the best yeah. like period warfare from that time I've ever seen on screen. But like that movie was not fun or entertaining other than those scenes. Like everything else in between, I'm just like, I don't want to be here right now. I don't want to be watching this. I'm not having a good time. What is it like <laughs> filler or is it just not good? No, it's literally just Joaquin. Fe okay, okay, okay. They got this the character of Napoleon so okay, wrong. It's literally yeah. just blatant anti-French, like pro-British propaganda of just like making Napoleon Dude. into a loser cuck boy. And like everything that the actual Napoleon accomplished in his life, they get, they allow somebody else to do in the movie for him. Either his wife or his brother or somebody else. He has no agency. He has no talent. He doesn't do anything in the movie. He just stumbles and fails his way into success and becomes like the most powerful emperor in Europe just like by being a little loser boy and then at the end of the movie when i really really knew it was british propaganda they have the british uh commander come and meet with napoleon and napoleon is eating british food and saying wow this food is amazing i'm like fake fake yeah. propaganda no one, lies no one eats british food and ever sits there and they're like wow this exactly. is good That's see how you um, know the that is fake and that's an example of something I could have watched that movie a trillion times and never thought, oh yeah, that's how that's how they're manipulating you or whatever. Like it, that or or lying. Like the, the thought would have never crossed my mind. So that's what I mean about like film nerds versus me. But you know, I would never, I would never slander the French. But uh, you know, I do have a small version of one of their flags here. <laughs> <laughs> No, I. That might be one of my favorite jokes. I Peterson just drops it randomly sometimes on his TikTok lives. Something will come up about, you know, something French, and you just drop in the fact that they have a, a white flag, and that's that's. That's it. I don't know. I I don't know how to how to put it the way that you do. I don't know. You do it with a certain finesse. It just kind of it comes and it goes faster than you're ready for. 
History will tell that it was the French who landed on the moon. Huh? I, what? What? <laughs> Is it because... Uh... Oh, okay, okay. That's a thinker. That's a thinker right there. You gotta explain it for people watching. No, no I you gotta... I, I, it didn't get explained to me. But you well, understand well, it. It's safe to say that we all <laughs> so? get it, but we don't want to explain it for those of us that are too slow to have gotten it. You know what I mean? No, the funny thing is you still don't get it, and it's it's funny to know that you still don't get it, actually. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I can see that for the, for the audience that that's the bit we're doing, <laughs> clearly, but, you know, I just, I just think it's better if we don't explain it so that everybody but us doesn't know what we're talking about. Yeah. The three of us. The radiation you... is going to turn the flags white on the moon eventually. They probably already are, but oh. that's the joke. Oh, that's that's what I had gotten the whole time. I I will say, Peterson. Um, I liked how you know you really leaned into it this year for Halloween. Uh, you know, really just embracing your NASA shill roots. I, I appreciated you actually, you know, finally telling the truth on your TikTok for once rather than, you know, lying about the shape of the earth and, uh, you know, the origins of the universe. Clearly, it was slappy and clearly the earth is flat. So something like that. Thank you for confirming for everybody. I, I do appreciate it. That so uh, that life support has system. Has voted yet? <laughs> hey, how do, I want that, too. I can't. You can't have it. It's only for us. Steve Jobs types. You guys have Max. Yeah. Yeah, I have Mac. We have Max. You gotta join the club. How do you get the said no. Is it two thumbs up or is it? I don't know. It was yeah, the peace sign. The peace sign. I actually have kind of been a menace at my local polling station because oh, those balloons. Never mind. When I went to go vote earlier this week, there was a guy there that was like holding up like a big Trump flag with a cowboy hat on, and he was like like waving it as everybody was walking in he was like today is pirate day and i was like what and he goes vote r r r all the way down the ticket and i was just like oh okay okay so this is election interference and he just like i was like <laughs> okay i'm gonna talk to somebody else basically and just it goes off and i like this guy really annoyed me so after i voted i went back to my car and got a piece of paper and wrote like i'm with stupid and then went and like just stuck by him for like the next like 30 minutes or so on my lunch <laughs> but i'm just like holding i'm a stupid sign and just like countering everything that he's telling people and it was just like the funniest troll like i was kind of being a menace and it was it was the funnest it was the highlight of my week my week basically you, you have to admit though that the pirate joke is pretty clever yeah, yeah i mean uh it, you it know. might it might be a dumb person but even dumb people can sometimes strike gold <laughs> It's like yeah, a, it's like the sexy it's pirate movie. The Democrat equivalent of voting D all the way down, but I think it might be a little bit explicit. So, oh yeah, yeah, I feel like that might need to think of something a little more PG because my mind instantly went, I think, to yeah, the exactly, same place. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, right, no, it's like, a... like I, 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 he got so mad and he was like trying to an, like avoid me and walk away from me, and I was just <laughs> following him around because like that's what he was doing to all the voters, and I was just like, I'm gonna try to annoy this guy as much as he's annoying all the rest of these people. And he was getting so frustrated with me. It was like hilarious. I don't know. I literally might have a problem because I was trying to get a Trump Kamala debate on my channel this week and I couldn't find any Trump supporters that would actually come and engage in, in the discussion. I think at this point, they're probably as exhausted of it all as everyone else is. And so like, I just wanted to have a conversation with some Trumpers this week, so I just did it IRL, not even recording it. So I, I'm telling you, you need you need to get on TikTok. Those That's... people don't get burned out. They they do lives like 16 hours a day, nonstop politics, and they do it every single day, no breaks. Like they have built their lives around wow. just talking politics. That's so and sad. It is. It's I. I could never do it. I'll say that much. I would get so burned out so so I'll fast. I'll tell you though, the, the guy that I was talking to with the flag, his wife was there too, and I, I like I was much nicer to her, and she was nicer to me than this guy was being. But I like literally was like, "What is it that you like so much about Donald Trump?" And she says, "Oh, I don't like Donald Trump." And I was like, 
you you love Donald Trump? And she's like, I love Donald Trump. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like how? Like do you you don't know him at all? And she's like, I followed him around for eight years, and we just feel like he's a part of us. Like they're a couple, they're marriage. They feel like Donald oh. Trump is like their third wheel. Uh, Destiny yeah. just debated Trump voters on Jubilee, and I I didn't watch this part of the debate, but it happens at the very beginning. Um, when it, it it's that circle jerk thing where they they like have a prompt and then somebody races over to the chair to debate it or whatever. Oh yeah. And the claim was uh, Trump's in a it, Trump supporters are in a cult or something like that. And this one guy mm-hmm. went up there. Oh, where the heck is this part? I can't find it. But he like he set Destiny asks him like or he's like, We're not in a cult, blah blah blah. And Destiny asks him like name anything wrong with Donald Trump. The guy's like, There's nothing wrong with him. He's like, I know. That's because you're in a cult. Let's see if I can oh, I'm let's see if I can find it real quick. It's at okay, the, the it's at the very insult. beginning. The very best Trump insult I heard all week was like, it was so incredible. This uh this this comedian was at the Madison Square Garden rally. And this is the best insult I've heard in a long, long time. It was brilliant. He was going through and roasting all of the Trump supporters in line for the rally. And he says, people are saying that this is a Nazi rally, but that obviously isn't true. I mean, the Nazis were physically fit. And then <laughs> everybody's like fat and obese and stuff. And he goes to one guy and he says like, like, like you, sir, you make me wish like you make me think that groceries are not expensive enough. <laughs> that's, pretty, like, that's pretty brutal. brutal. It was so funny though. All right, here I'm going to I'm just going to play this part of it cuz I don't know where it I don't know where it happens in the I just shared the Discord stream. What an idiot. Dude, that'd be good. Then you could just share that on your stream and just echo for the rest of it. Yeah, that'd be really funny, wouldn't it? Um No, it'd just be good content. <laughs> You, sir, I don't think you know what. The- okay, so yeah, it is plain. So. I don't think you know what American values are. I don't think you know what this country was founded or built upon. And I think you guys are obsessed with a cult leader who is taking the entire oh, Republican Party off of a everything cliff. he say he do. Trump is gangster. Remember. Can you give me one thing you don't like about Trump? I love everything about. I know Trump. because it's a cult. Thank it's you. It's not a cult. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Even the blonde lady in the back realized it's a cult right there. No, that that chick is is the dumbest person in that entire circle of people. Like if you, wow. if you watch That's what, really saying something. uh, yeah, if you watch what was going on, there's, a, uh, she's fighting for last place with this other chick, but yeah, it was, it was pretty bad. Where does that guy actually, I'll just transcribe you know, the video and do a search for it. I, I actually, uh, I think destiny makes good points. I like the, you know, points that he actually makes, but destiny himself I, I don't know. Sometimes the way he conducts himself in certain, uh, I it's guess, pretty, debates. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Yeah, it, it just really gets to me because it turns into a screaming match. And it's like, dude, I I don't know. He used to not do that as much. It was really after the Jordan Peterson one where I, I noticed that it started ramping up. And that's because Jordan know. Peterson couldn't control his fucking emotions either. <laughs> I think uh, from... I mean, I've been I've been seeing Destiny for years too, and I've always seen him as a spaz. Um, and I also like sometimes he makes really good arguments, and then sometimes his arguments are like dog shit and make no sense and are like very easily contradicted by evidence and reality. So it's like mm-hmm. very hit or miss with Destiny for me. But like he recently, um, like he's nailing it here with this guy, and he was like recently debating. Um, God, who was that? It wasn't Ben Shapiro, but it, it was somebody that he was debating like last week, and he absolutely folded them. It was like glorious. Like he was hitting every point perfectly. So it's really hit or miss. That's He's, why I don't do yeah. politics. I, I like to stick to things where I know I'm objectively correct. Like the shape of the earth. You don't have to be a fucking genius. You just have to have gotten past fifth grade, and you should be good. Yeah. I would say Destiny matches the energy of who he's debating. He's he can be super like in that Jordan Peterson thing. For the most part, he was very much like waited his turn and and all that other kind of stuff. But like you know, in this Jubilee thing, like I wouldn't recommend watching very much of it because it is screaming at a thousand miles per hour on both sides. But he only does that 
because the other person's doing it and he doesn't let them get away with it. Like he won't, he won't let somebody sit there and ramble off and gish gal 25 false things in a row for the most part. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I don't know. Like I said, I, most of destiny's content is politics, especially as of like the last year, he used to kind of spread it out more. So I don't watch him as much, but yeah, it's, uh, it's all politics. Yeah, yeah, politics. So I just I can't do about, that. Uh, about next week, I've got I've got some money riding on the election, so I think uh, I I think I'm just women excited are to stop putting ads. For funny enough, um, uh, Nate Silver, he's a pollster. He's he's saying that all the polls are are basically bullshit, and the reason is because um, the it's very much a toss up like on the averages, but um, what all of the polls are doing is saying all the swing states, it's like a 1%, you know, difference, which that's the, that's kind of what the average is telling you. But he, he did the math and he said for all of the polls to be saying that everything is the average, the odds of that are like one in nine and a half trillion or something like that. that. And I, I think, I think the pollsters have kind of an impossible, like, I don't know how to say it. I think they're all so scared of getting it wrong that they're all just playing it safe. That would yeah. be my bet as to what's going on. But well, I, think, I, I think um, from a pollster's point of view, right, if you have a, your poll is biased for Kamala, then you lose all credibility because it's like, they're like, every single year they can't get Trump support right. But if your polls are biased towards Trump, you don't lose credibility because all of a sudden, like the the main people that are attacking the credibility of polls are the ones saying that they underrepresent Trump. So if your poll overrepresents Trump, suddenly your polls look credible again for people. It's like a, it's like a weird calculus, I think, to where like if they lean it towards Trump in their polling, they view that as being safer for their long term business prospects, like in future elections. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I'm just excited to stop getting political ads. That's really all I care yeah, that'll about. Be I'm nice. so so tired. But then, no matter who gets picked, we got another four years of complaining from uh, whoever is upset by it. Which I'm so tired of that loop. But I'm an adult, so I guess I'm stuck in it until I'm done. The, if but if, I would rather be the one gloating and the other people be complaining rather than me complaining and them gloating. So. Yeah, I, I I hope Trump doesn't. I hope Trump doesn't win. Mostly just so that we don't have to ever talk about him again because he won't run. He won't run in twenty twenty eight or or whatever. What do you mean, it is. man? You don't want damn near ninety year old Trump as president? No, I don't. Ever since twenty seventeen, I had I've had a vision. Some might call it a prophecy from on high. I was delivered a vision one night where I saw. The year is, you know, distant future. They're wheeling Trump out in a wheelchair. He's got, like, the tubes hooked up to help him breathe, right? They wheel him into the MAGA rally, and he's like, Make America great again! And then everybody's erupting into applause, and he's still campaigning into his 90s. I I, I have that vision. I I think he, he might actually do that. Whether or not he's running for president or just continues to do Trump rallies just for fun for his own ego i don't know <laughs> that that would be something to see that would, that would, that would be interesting. <laughs> seeing a 90 year old man rolling around on stage just like yeah make it great <laughs> and see they're already trialing that kind of format because he already went on a rally and just stood there for like 40 minutes while like ave maria played eight times <laughs> that was so and, weird like, yeah, that was and hilarious. now that's the perfect way to do a Trump rally once he's like in his 90s and wheelchair bound and he like he's really cannot form a coherent sentence. Even worse, they just wheel him out and play some opera music while he just sits there in his wheelchair and everybody applauds. That's that's the future for for Trump, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what's going to happen. Uh you need to watch Pennsylvania because if Kamala wins Pennsylvania, then yep. she, if she can get Pennsylvania, uh, Wisconsin, Michigan, she wins. Yep. Michigan, it's really hard to say what's going to happen with Michigan because uh, there's so much that that's where the uncommitted movement uh, 
dominated. Now, a lot of those people, because when they're faced with the reality of the Republican platform and abortion might just vote Democrat anyway, even though so many of them are so against uh, what's happening in in Gaza, but I don't know. But if Trump wins Pennsylvania, Kamala has to win uh, Michigan, Wisconsin, Arizona, and Nevada. I don't think she needs to win Georgia or North Carolina, but she'd have to win all of those. So if Trump gets Pennsylvania, uh, start sweating because it's not that that will be by far the biggest problem indicator. So I agree that it all does come down to Pennsylvania. I would say that there's reason to feel pretty good about Pennsylvania based on the early voting numbers um, in terms of the number of women versus men voting. Um, Because there's like a million more women that have voted in Pennsylvania than men right now. So that is a very, very good sign. Um, And then, yeah, it all really does come down to Pennsylvania. Unfortunately, I don't think that we have the men versus women demographics for Michigan. I don't think that's released for that state. But for Pennsylvania, it is. And we know women are turning out. And that's a great sign for Kamala. And this is my central thesis. Sorry, one more thing. Oh, you're good. The central thesis for this election is that women are going to turn out in numbers that are not reflected in the polling to help Kamala, and that evangelical Christians are going to sit home and not turn out to vote for Trump. That's my central thesis. I don't know if you guys are plugged into any right-wing podcasts at all, but they have been freaking out all week long about evangelical turnout. They have been saying... Oh, the Catholics are coming out to vote for Trump, but the evangelicals, we have to go get their pastors. We have to get their preachers to come out and try to lead their congregations to the poll because they are freaking out because apparently these evangelicals are over Trump. They're they're no longer enthused about him and they're not showing up to vote for him. There, there's, I don't know, that's a sentiment that's held among uh, a lot of people that were Trump supporters. And um, I was going to say, also in Nebraska, uh, where I am, um, there's a district that we have, because we have three congressional districts, there's one that might flip. And if that happens, that that could, uh, what is it, that could make one of, yeah. what is it, the college's votes actually go towards Kamala, which well, in Nebraska would yeah, be that's, massive. That's Omaha, and it probably will go blue. But yeah, what I was saying mm-hmm. earlier, if she wins Pennsylvania michigan wisconsin that gives her exactly 270 but that that assumes that that uh nebraska vote goes democrat i don't know if you guys know this but democrats lost like three or democratic states lost like three electoral college votes yeah because uh so so many people left california and those couple other states texas gained two and florida gained to, or no, Florida gained two. I'm not sure about Texas. I don't remember, but Texas did also gain. But my, the, what I was saying was, um, with that Nebraska state, they they were putting a lot of pressure on the governor of Nebraska to oh, yeah. try to put like legislation to change that district so that Kamala couldn't win. If they changed that district so that Nebraska just starts like votes as an entire state, then it's 269 for Kamala and. Trump wins. So they they were putting immense pressure on this guy. It would be tied and, in that case. And and he said, uh, yeah, it would be tied, but then it would go to the Senate, which has more Republicans, and Trump would win. So the the um um the the governor of Nebraska basically said, it's not my problem if Trump or Kamala wins. And they said he's not a patriot. He's a traitor to our nation. And, and like, they're literally trying to paint, they're trying to, they were trying to do another January 6th at the Nebraska state house to try to get him to change his mind and, and put this, but like they were literally Charlie Kirk and his followers are saying, go march to the Nebraska state house, put yeah. pressure on this guy. He needs to stand up for his country and like change Nebraska's electoral votes. It's crazy. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's kind of crazy because Nebraska, obviously historically, red through and through and uh the amount of support i'm seeing going the other way this year is actually kind of crazy especially in like my area and a little further north from where i am it was almost all completely red 2016 2020 so it's almost entirely flipped for like my entire area that i'm in that's a great sign the it's insane in all honesty i wasn't expecting to see that happen in fucking nebraska of all places i wouldn't be i wouldn't get excited about 
elect about it changing anything about the electoral college because like for Probably example not. um well i mean the way nebraska votes in the presidential election that's what i actually yeah. mean because like kansas uh, abortion was on the ballot for kansas in 2022 and it overwhelmingly uh well, if I say won or lost, I haven't specified what I mean yet. Oh, a, a <laughs> pro-abortion won in the state, basically. And the exact same thing happened in Missouri and, you know, whatever. Uh, but uh, they're, they're still going to vote for a Republican for president from yeah. now until it's hard to say when, when that would ever change. So I, w- I wouldn't get too excited yeah. or optimistic about I, that. I, um, I, I but doubt I will, that, that will change. One thing does give me optimism is... This last year in 2024, I've been in two uh, churches, like hardcore churches, right? One of them, I went for a video of um, witnessing a faith healing. So it was like a wandering church that was going around doing faith healings for people and curing blindness and sickness <laughs> oh and all that stuff. Oh my goodness. And the other one, I just needed a bathroom break when I was on a road trip in like the middle of the panhandle of Texas. And I, there was no gas station, but there was a church. And I stopped by to ask if I could use their bathroom and they would just started services. So I was like, well, this is kind of weird. I've never been able to go to a random like small town Texas church before. I wonder what stuff they're going to talk about. And I did get bored and leave after like 15 minutes. But there was one thing that really stuck with me where like this was in the middle of rural, the reddest area of Texas. Right. And at this deeply like evangelical church, like hardcore literalist interpretation of the Bible, they were talking about the wickedness of politicians on both sides and how Christians should be rising above politics and not engaging because theirs is a spiritual realm, okay? They're supposed to be above the worldly or something. And I was like, dude, this is crazy. Yeah, like, this is coming out and people not to vote. Like, this is like, yeah. like or not, not getting people not to vote, but trying to see, like, there's more important stuff than politics. Then don't waste your time with that. Focus on God and spiritual stuff. And I'm like, dude, this is like... This might cause. Uh, this is maybe driving a lot of this evangelical low turnout. Is that they're they're done with the politics. They're they're done with him. Jehovah's Witnesses don't vote, but yeah, I saw. We got to end the stream here in about ten seconds. But I saw uh, it was a couple of years ago. But there was a church, and they were doing. They were chanting "Let's go, Brandon!" in the church. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty messed up. Dude, that yeah. sounds like the kind of church you could drink a beer at. Um, I'd be all right with that, or or go in just to take a shit at, as as Grayson did. <laughs>